So Isaiah chapter 9 verse number 6 if we can all read it together. 1 2 3 For unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace One more time read it with everything that is in you 1 2 3 For unto us a child is born Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. You may sit in heavenly places. Now, today we are going to, the teaching will be powerful because you will be able to use it immediately. Amen. 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 Some messages, you need some form of prayer in order to activate it. I miss you. Where have you been? <laughs> you know, you need some form of prayer to get it going. But there are certain things that it just, all right, you know, change your mind and you are right there. If, if I'm making any sense to you. If you shift your mind, you automatically enter to that place. That place becomes automatic for you to function in. So, today I'm going to teach you about R.I.P., resting in peace. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Some people are like, ah, is he saying we're going to die? <laughs> Rest has nothing to do with death. Sleep has everything to do with death. Now, if you understand spiritual things, you will understand that the purpose of rest in peace, you see it on tombstones, is because some people have died, but they have not rested. Now, if the dead, some of the dead don't rest, how about the living? How many of the living are actually resting? Hello? Hello. The highest sign of faith in a child of God is your capacity to rest. Some people get their rest and their comfort from praying. Some people get their rest and their comfort by what they have accumulated that gives them a sense of security. But genuine faith in the sight of God is measured by your level of rest. Anyone that is in Christ that does not have rest... You have not allowed Jesus to truly be your Lord and your Savior. He is Lord of your soul because your soul will enter heaven. But he is not Lord over your life because you do not trust in him to give you rest. The Bible says it like this. It says, come unto me all you who are heavy what? And I will give you what? Rest. So if you are a believer and you are lacking rest, there is something that is missing. You have not received something from God, not because he has not given it to you, but you have not understood the purpose and the mission of God in human form in your life. When the Lord Jesus came into this world, he did not only come to die for sins. You have to remember his life, his suffering, and his death and re his resurrection. All of it has significance that benefits you. The Bible says he was poor so that through his poverty, you may be what? Rich. Uh, you may be what? Rich. It didn't say so that you may be spiritually rich. This is what your pastors want you to believe. It's not true. God has nothing against you being wealthy as long as you can keep your soul. As long as it can remain in, con it can remain in control. As long as you're not missing heaven. God has no issue giving you silver and gold. God would rather not give you silver and gold and you make it to heaven. Then he gives you silver and gold and you lose your soul. What will it profit a man to gain the whole world? And to lose what? Your soul. So God is not interested in you losing your soul. 
So anything that will stand in the way of your soul, if there is danger that it poses, God will remove it. He would rather you suffer and you make it to heaven than you live in abundance and you end up in hell. Amen. Amen. Now, the life of the Lord Jesus has significance. 100% significance. Most of us, we just talk about the cross, but we don't understand the cross is a package deal. Touch your neighbor say, it's a package deal. It's, it's a, a package, package deal. deal. It is not only about salvation, even though salvation is the climax of it. From this side of the veil. Now, I want you to hear me. Because when you get salvation now, you have transcended this world. You have entered into the heavenly realm. Now you have begun a new life in God. Meaning that salvation is the end for, you, for fleshly nature. But after the cross, you enter now into your spiritual nature. It is another journey altogether. Now some people think as long as I'm saved, I'm good. No, if you're not developing your spiritual life, that is why we have what, we, what is called spiritual babies. Because in the, world, in the world of men, you may be 70, you may be 80, you may be 20, you may be 30. You are considered an adult. But in the spirit, you are considered an infant because you never developed. I don't know if this is making sense for somebody. Yes. Now, understand this by the spirit of God as we are going deeper. Rest. Is the primary thing that the Lord Jesus came to give to you and me. The only reason you can trust that if he dies he will raise again. Is because he has given you assurance. That I am going but trust me I'm coming back in three days. So the disciples were shaken because they had no capacity to receive the level of peace. That Jesus was ready to offer them. I don't know if you can hear me. Jesus revealed to them what was going to happen and they saw it happening. He revealed what was going to happen and they saw it happening. He will say, go into this place, you'll find a man, he will have a donkey. Tell him to give you that donkey. He will ask you, who needs it? Tell him the Lord needs it and he will give it to you. Notice Jesus is on the other side of town. He's giving them prophetic direction. <laughs> Go this place, you'll find a donkey, take the donkey. The guy will ask you, who wants it? Say the Lord wants it and he will let it go. Yeah. Notice Jesus, that's why when they hate on prophecy, just know they don't read their Bible. Yeah. Jesus did it too many times. Now, now capture this by the Spirit of God. We are going somewhere. Now capture this. Now, Jesus showed them a lot of things. But when they saw him arrested, he told them about being arrested. He told them about being betrayed. But when he was killed and they saw him dead on the cross, they lost their peace. They could no longer keep their peace. When they saw him suffering, they could no longer hold on to their peace. Some of them denied him. Some of them all escaped and hid themselves. The only ones that remained was the women and John. Everyone else was gone because their peace was lost. There is a reason why the Bible says, keep your peace. Now there are level, there are different kinds of peace. There is the peace of God. There is the peace of the Lord Jesus. And there is your personal peace. But when God delivers this unto you, it is your personal responsibility to manage the peace you have been given. Now, Satan does not attack you because you have money that is coming. Satan doesn't even attack your health. He cares less about your health. What Satan is after is your peace. Because when you lose your peace, it is open season for him to do anything. He that's Amen. good, that's good. good. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Now you have to understand that every name of God carries a presence and carries a manifestation of the Lord God himself. Amen. 
If he says, I'm Jehovah Jireh, he's saying, I am your provision, not just your provider. I am the provision itself. If he says he's Jehovah Shalom, he's saying, I am God, your peace. Notice, every name of God has something to do with a specific area of your life. Because God knows we have needs. He doesn't just provide for the need. He actually becomes that provision. That in that specific area of your life. You will never need anything as long as Jesus is with you. Because he becomes the supply of all things that you need. Now the question is why are you not resting? I'm not saying why are you not sleeping? I know so many people that go to sleep, but you wake up tired. Mm, am I talking to somebody? Uh, you are too quiet for me. Maybe I'll go to the overflow. You go to sleep. And you wake up tired. You are trying to sleep and you sleep for eight hours and you wake up and you're like, is it already morning? You don't even want to get out of bed because you just feel exhausted about everything. Listen to me. The devil targets those who have burdens because he knows you're an easy target. He knows this one knows the master and the master can give them rest but they have not yet rested in him. The reason why miracles are delayed in your life is not because God is not able to make it happen right now. The issue is that if God gives it to you, with what hands will you hold it? Oh. That's good. good. Every desire you have should be in rest. The moment your desire is developed out of rest, it becomes a burden. Because now you have become or you have taken the place of God trying to fix things that you have no power to fix. Now the devil will keep building illusions for you. Saying, yo, if you just work harder, if you take another job, if you do this, if you do that, then you'll be able to solve this. And the moment you get money, you are going to start deducting this burden. He, another thing happens. You come out of the fire, you go into the what? Frying pan. You jump out of the frying pan, you go into the furnace. It's like one trouble after another trouble after another trouble. I'm here to declare to somebody, it is your time to rest. Amen. God wants peace to reign in your mind and in your heart because if there is no rest, then there is no assurance of salvation. Amen. I'll sit for two seconds. The assurance of salvation is not what you prayed, is if you have rested after your prayer. If you want to know God heard your prayer, after you prayed, you rested. Yes, oh, so good. If you want to know if you truly, truly, genuinely prayed, examine your soul after you prayed. If you pray and you are still trying to fix the issue, oh. you have not rested. You did not pray. So good. And I am not talking about, oh, God, give me a job and you rest in the house. No. I'm talking about situations you have no control. When God is preparing to elevate you, God wants to make sure that he can be a partner in your life. Do you understand that I have things that I need to do for you because you have no strength to do it for yourself? Amen. So the Lord measures it by allowing burdens to come on you and he's waiting to see. Uh -huh. 
Let me explain it this way. When God, when you are walking with the Lord, you already have burdens. Jesus said, come to me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon yourself. What is Jesus saying? He's saying, your burden should come from me. Your burden should not come from the world. Because you are in the world, but not of it. So if my burdens originate from the world, then I am being controlled by another master. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, Bishop, am I, I, I feel like I'm only talking to you, Bishop. If my burdens come from the world, it means that there is somebody else that has put their yoke on me. I am subject to somebody else. But if my yoke comes from God, then he will give me the boldness I need to go after the things I need to go after. He will give me the grace I need to prosper. He will give me the favor I need. He will give me the connection I need. He will open doors for me because it is of his doing. It is not mine. And he has already gone ahead of me. Where is your burden coming from? Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, where is your burden coming from? Neighbor, where is your burden coming from? Look at the neighbor that doesn't like speaking to you and tell them the same thing. Neighbor, where is your burden coming from? I can't hear you. Neighbor, where is your burden coming from? Now, Isaiah 26 Verse 3 to 4. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Notice there is a peace that is not perfect. Come on. Uh, <laughs> this is for overflow, maybe. Come on. There is a peace that is not perfect. Some of you are in peace when you're in church, when you leave church. Peace is gone. Come on, prophet. Some of you are in peace when you worship. You feel Ibijib is all rubbish. Oh, God. After that, you are pissed off again. Because you realize that somebody is nagging. You have no consistent peace, so it is not perfect. Come on. Come on. Because your peace is seasonal. I feel like I'm talking to that sister over there. I'm speaking to this man over here. It feels like I'm talking to other people. I don't know if I'm talking to you. Maybe I'm talking to Overflow. Maybe I'm speaking to Revelation Nation. I don't know who I'm speaking to. But somebody needs to enter into perfect peace. Ah, somebody shout glory. glory. If you have the need to always correct people, you don't have perfect peace. Good. If you feel the need to correct people all the time, you don't have perfect peace. If you cannot stay out of people's business, you have no perfect peace. You're helping the people. When you are resting in peace, what people are doing does not rattle you. What people think of you does not faze you. What people try to do to you does not faze you. Why? Because none of it will work anyway. Because you are kept in perfect peace. Hallelujah. You are kept. That will keep him in perfect. There is a perfection of peace. If you are too reactive to everything, you don't have perfect peace. If you cannot, every little thing, you are ready to fight back. You are ready to speak back. You already have an answer. When somebody is speaking to you, you already have something. You don't have perfect peace. And that is how the devil will trick you to trick yourself 
and end up in a pit that you don't understand how you entered into. Because the devil will poke you, boom, to see how you react. And then he will poke you again. He will poke you again because he knows this one will talk too much. This one will gossip. This one will abort their miracle. This one will abort their breakthrough. All I just need is to squeeze them a little bit and see. If they react, I know I can get them. But when the devil tries you, you look to God, you say, Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked will I go back. Glory be to the name of the living God. The devil is confused because it's like this one is resting in perfect peace. Amen. Hear me by the spirit of God. Please sit for two seconds. We are going somewhere. I want you to, we are going somewhere. I beg you. I beg you, we are going somewhere. Why am I communicating this to you? You have to understand that miracles need an atmosphere. Amen. The reason why Adam and Eve have, had to be out of the garden and the devil remained in the garden. <laughs> let, me, let me fix it for you so that you can understand. You have to remember the devil was in the garden, but the atmosphere was not disturbed. Why? Because the devil didn't mess with anybody. He was calm. Adam and Eve are doing their things for however amount of years they were in there. One day the devil asks Eve, so... Uh, did God say you can eat of any of these things? Oh, no. Yeah, he said, no, we can eat any tree, not this one. Okay, cool, 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 cool. You know why, right? He doesn't want you to be like God. He lied to them because they were created just like God. They had the image, the likeness of God. God cloned himself. So... The moment they eat the fruits and all these things, peace is lost. They start worrying about nakedness. You've been with this woman in the garden for so long. You've been in with this man in the garden for too long. In Genesis chapter 2 at the end, he said, And the man and the woman were naked and they were not ashamed. What does that mean? They knew what shame was, but their mistakes did not bring any form of shame. They were not perfect. Because you have to understand that shame is connected to sin. It's connected to failure. They were the only two human beings. The concept of shame shouldn't be there unless it has a different meaning. But the moment they eat the fruit, their eyes are opened. What happened when their eyes were opened? The first thing that happened, they were ashamed. And they started looking for leaf, fig leaves to cover themselves. And when God came, they went to hide in some bushes. Notice, the atmosphere was disturbed because it is a joy for God to come. It should not be terror. So it means violence manifested within them. They no longer had peace because they allowed somebody else to put his yoke on them. So when the Lord came, because they were no longer yoked to God, the automatic response is, let us hide from him. The shame was their own, but they hid themselves because they could not be in the same atmosphere. In order for God to bring them close to himself, he literally made them aprons. God make, made them clothes, ram skin. To cover them so that they can at least come before him. The Lord punishes them 
And he drives them out of the garden. And the devil also was driven out of the garden because the Lord said, all your days you shall eat dust. So God released him into the world outside of the garden. But before that, he was already cast on earth. So him going to the garden is like, Lord, you cast me on earth. Where am I going to go? I'm just going to go into the garden. Are you getting what I'm saying? But Adam and Eve lost their peace. Because they were no longer yoked to God. Peace is not just I trust God. Peace comes from being yoked to God. Amen. I, I want you to understand this by the spirit of God. The atmosphere of the garden could no longer keep them. They had to be driven out, not only because of the tree, but they became a contradiction to the spirit of the place they were in. When you walk around, you walk with an atmosphere. Every one of you walks with an atmosphere. Every home Every apartment has an atmosphere. Yes. Amen. Have you ever gone to a nice house and it looks dark? Yes. Yes. They have a lot of light and everything, but it just looks like it's dark in here. Yes. <laughs> Can we turn up the lights? No, the lights are, no, there's so much light. No, light is not the issue. It has the wrong spiritual atmosphere. Good. Good. I don't know if you are catching what I'm saying. You just feel like ah, something is off, but there's nothing off. The pool is nice, infinity pool. This, but you just ask. Ah, it's there is a disconnect. There is a complete disconnect. There are atmospheres that demons love. Let me show you something. Let me go. Let me, let me find this. I believe it's Proverbs chapter 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk. Is it Psalm 1? Psalm 1. Okay, I'm sorry. Forgive me. You're already ready to crucify me. Psalms 1. Now, I want you to notice this. I want you to see this. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, let me give and let me take my two brothers, my elder brother and my younger brother. Come. So, now, these two handsome men, one is married, one is unmarried. <clears throat> Michael Jackson, come. <laughs> so Jack, Jackson 5 <laughs> now, now listen to what the Bible is saying <laughs> Blessed is the man Who does not walk In the counsel of the ungodly What does that mean? He is walking going about his life Now my brothers are holy, righteous And this is for demonstration purposes Amen. He meets them on the way and they are chopping up. What he does is he does not stay with them. He walks by them. Meaning that even though these are his friends, he does not remain with them because if he walks with them, his atmosphere will be contaminated. Yes, Amen. So he is blessed because he does not walk in their counsel. Yes, so what they tell him does not influence his walk. Amen. So he maintains the integrity of his atmosphere. Amen. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Teaching good. Now, secondly, he says, mm -hmm. he is blessed yes. if he does not stand yes, sir. in the counsel of the ungodly. And he does not stand with sinners. What does that mean? 
He can walk by them. Uh-huh. He should never stand with them. Because what happens is this. Whoever has a stronger atmosphere. Yes, sir. Teach. Yes, sir. Teach. Yes, sir. Teach will overtake the other ones. At- yes. Amen. Amen. There are humans that have more influence than others. There are men that just uh, God created them in that way whereby uh, they just have this commanding presence that if they stand and they do something, you just comply. Even if you don't know them, they have such a strong atmosphere. If it's in the hands of God, it is powerful. If it's in the hands of Satan, it is wicked. So if you stand, remember, two is better than one, regardless of the sides. That's good. Amen. That's why the Bible says, bad company corrupts what? It will mess you up. So God is saying you are blessed if you don't stand with them. Because if you stand with them, what is going to happen is your atmosphere will start to lose its its integrity. It will start to become thinner and thinner. Before you know it, you start engaging in some things. You may not fully be in, but you may do some things. But the problem is you are not walking. If you walk, it builds back up. Amen. That's good. If you remain with them, yeah. it starts to get thinner and thinner and thinner. And before you know it. Now listen to the third one. No seated in the seat of the scornful. Notice the worst one is when now you are no longer standing with them. Now you are sitting. Yeah. Yeah. Notice the atmosphere has completely been dismantled. Hello? Hello. That is why the Bible says, do not make your abode in sin. Please, please, my brothers. Michael Jackson, thank you. Amen. When he was still our color. <laughs> you know, you know what I, and then, ah, uh, Bishop. Bishop said, and they were honest. <laughs> now put him on camera. Today they will attack both of us. You know what I always say? You know, uh, I don't know if you guys remember Andre Crouch. Do you remember the... Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I knew him personally. Years ago, Bishop knows this. You know, before Michael died, he was with Andre Crouch. People don't know this story. Yeah, he, he, uh, he invited him over. He prayed for him. Led him to the Lord. After a few days, the guy died. That's how it happened. So you may enter in heaven and you see some guy with an afro. We, we caught that. We caught that. Reset button. <laughs> so what I'm saying is not far-fetched, please. <laughs> anyway, just for laughs. But it's true. I knew Pastor Andre Crouch person. I even knew his sister. My, my, my good friend, my good friend Jesse. When I moved here, he was my first friend, uh, Apostle Leslie Peter's son. Yeah, when, when Jesse passed away, it was Pastor Andre Crouch that did his service. He comforted me big time because Jesse was like a brother to me. So I knew him personally. So the story, I know it from the source. Not he say, she say. Anyway, I digress. Let's get back to what we are saying. So your atmosphere determines if you will be in perfect peace. You see, Jesus was sent into the world. Jesus was in with sinners because the Lord Jesus had something that many believers don't have. The Bible says he had the spirit without what? Measure. It means that he had fulfilled every dimension of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Most believers don't understand there are seven levels in the Holy Spirit. I won't teach about it today. You can go and I think I have a message on it. The seven spirits of God. There are seven levels of the Holy Spirit. 
When you have all seven, then now you have the spirit without measure. Amen. Just a little shanda. No. That is why the apostles were filled three times until they maximized. The first time Jesus blew on them, received the Holy Spirit. The second time he said, wait until the Spirit of God comes upon you. The third time is when they were chastised, they came together and prayed. They were filled again. Three times were they filled. You just say, I was filled with the Holy Spirit in 1955 and I've been walking with the Lord. The apostles three times, you one time. Hey. <laughs> Apostle Gershon maybe seven times. <laughs> the apostle of righteousness. So understand this, understand this, is that, uh, take me back to my Isaiah scripture. Yes, ma'am. Or oh, something is on me. Oh, thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. That's my mom, by the way. Uh, look at your jealousy. I'm getting kisses. <laughs> Hear this by the Spirit of God. Hear this. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Your mind leaves God because you don't fully trust God. And because you don't fully trust God, the integrity of the faith you carry does not get to perfection. Notice peace has nothing to do with prayer. Father, I pray <laughs> the peace that surpasses all understanding <laughs> be upon me. God is saying, no, nope, keep your mind on me. It's not a prayer thing. When your mind is on the problems, you will never walk on perfect peace. When your mind is on solutions, now you're walking with God because all God will do is give you solutions. Amen. Amen. Let, me, let, me, let me go to this side where my Armenians and Sri Lankans are on this side. Hear, hear me by the Spirit of God. Hear me. Whose mind stayed on him. This is why you need to be about your father's business, not your neighbor's business. Amen. You are robbing yourself of your peace. Amen. Oh, did you see her? Hmm. Did you see what? Hmm. Did you see him? Hmm. Um, I'm telling you. Notice all these things, what you are doing, all that you are doing is robbing yourself of peace because you are entering into matters that should not be your concern. Peace is not just in what God says. But peace is directly connected to my ability to stay on God. To remain with God despite what is happening. Amen. Amen. To live is Christ. To die is gain. Whether things are good or are bad, my eyes are on Jesus. Amen. My eyes are not on who can deliver me, who can save me. Because my strength simply comes from God himself. Amen. A man of God, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Is this your wife? That's my daughter. Oh, your daughter. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm, I'm glad to see Papa. God, God gave you a mighty breakthrough. God is good. So, so hear me, hear me well. Congolese remains back Congolese. I love that. So, so catch this by the Spirit of God. So what, what, is, what is the issue with us? Is whoever... A double-minded man is unstable in all their ways. And such a person should not expect anything from God. That's what the Bible tells you. You can't play both sides with God. You cannot say, God, give me a breakthrough, but you're working on your own breakthrough. 
You can't say God bless me when you're figuring out how to bless yourself. Amen. You can't say God show me the way but you're looking for your own way. Amen. The reason why many don't hear the voice of God is because you ask God not to get direction. You talk to God to approve your plan. So good. So good. Ah, Father, as I do this, open the doors. Not Father, is this the door? If you tell me to take a detour, I'm okay with it as long as you're with me. But many will say, Father, open this door. <laughs> Jehovah, do it now. <laughs> ah, God. But God is like, uh, this is not what I want. And because you don't get the answer, you find another man of God that is extra anointed. Says, I just need to pour oil. <laughs> Me, if something is wrong with you, I'll tell you, listen, it's your fault. Not that person's fault. It's you. I'll tell you what God is saying. I won't play around with it. We don't play with God here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So God will keep you in perfect peace. So when God gives you peace, he doesn't keep you. He only keeps you when you keep him on your mind. Amen. So the anxieties you have right now, the worries you have right now, they are normal. They are a sign you need to rest. I'll say it one more time. They are a sign you are actually a candidate. You qualify to rest. It is not a disqualification. It is a qualification. You are qualified to rest. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Okay, let's look at this verse real quick. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. We'll finish with this. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ. Notice, every time God speaks about peace, he's talking about your mind. Yes, yes. The greatest enemy to you that is a threat to you is not the devil. It's your mind. Let me go to overflow. You, you guys are asleep. Let me, let me go to... Whenever God speaks about peace, he speaks about the mind. Prophet Ron, I love you. Are you hearing me? God always speaks about the mind. The reason why he will always mention the mind is because you have to remember, a carnal, a carnal mind is an enmity with God. A spiritual mind is a mind that is focused itself on God. Is life. So you are the one who determines life and death. It's not simply on your tongue. Because your tongue cannot release where your mind is not. It's good. Teaching good. I, I will say it one more time. Ha. All you have to do ha, is speak life. You are speaking life, nothing is changing. Ask yourself, where is your mind? Amen. Amen. Just declare life. I shall live and not die. Things keep collapsing. Life, life, life. Nothing is changing. Ask yourself, where is my mind? Because my tongue can only release. I was, uh, I was explaining this and I've explained this twice today with two different conversations I was having. And I was explaining this. You have to understand that the spiritual world opens according to extremes. Extremes. The soul of man is like a pendulum. It swings one side. It can swing to the spiritual side. Swing to the physical side. Extremes determine whether you're going to hear from God or you're not going to hear from God. 
There are two things that make me prophesy very dangerously. If I am extremely happy or I am extremely annoyed. All right, let me not teach you. Let me keep my mouth shut. So this is true. If you look at the prophets in scripture, either they were extremely moved or when they were extremely angry. That is why the Lord says, in your anger, sin not. Because if one mistake, it can be the most dangerous, devastating thing you ever do. This is why you have to be careful. This mouth, you have to control it. Because it determines whether God is going to lift you or put you down. Don't get peace because you see somebody else destroyed. Even if it is your enemy. Amen. Don't receive peace in your heart. In fact, it will never be peace. Because it will never be satisfied. I was having a discussion with, uh, with my bishop yesterday. We had a good time. I was spending time with him. And we were talking about certain things. And I told him, I told him what I had done with something. And he said, okay. So he was, we were laughing. It was a good discussion. He said... Did you do this, what the Bible says? I said, Bishop, I couldn't because these people called me this. They did this and this and this. He said, okay. I said, Bishop, I am the right hand of God in this one. I am God's judgment in this situation. So we were talking. This was a prophetic conversation. Then he told me, did it feel good when you got what you wanted? I said, honestly, it did not. He said, then there's no point for it. Don't have the need to be right. That is not peace. Good, good teaching. The need to be right is not peace. The need to be right is not peace. The need to be above others is not peace. The need to control others is not peace. Listen, I live my life pretty simply. Me, I'm just like this. I'm in my own planet. If you are in my world, cool. If you want to do your own thing, I'm also fine. I don't chase after situations. I don't try to control. How you feel is your own. It's not mine. As long as what I have done is upright in the eyes of God. How you feel, what you say is your own problem. It's not mine. So I don't live a life that is clouded by people's opinions, people's feelings, people's thoughts. I am completely delivered and I walk in perfect peace, in perfect calm, simply because I'm just in my own world. I love spending time with my brothers. Chaz is always mostly with me. And Chaz is such a calm, it's just his nature to be just still waters. I'm also still waters. I probably talk a little more than Chaz, but Chaz is really calm. Sometimes he'll be in a place you don't even know that he's there. Eva's like that too. But Chaz doesn't really react easily. Something may happen. Even Andrew is like that. Something may happen. They may be able to keep quiet for a few months and then talk about it. Not because they are burning with anything. They just know how to maintain their peace. The Bible says keep your peace. You cannot sustain a miracle if you don't have peace. The miracle is not the source of peace. But the miracle comes to an atmosphere filled with what? Peace. Good. Breakthroughs don't cause peace. Breakthroughs are attracted to an atmosphere that is full of what? Peace. The maintenance of peace is your responsibility. I'm going to say it one more time. Ask yourself this before the Lord genuinely. Where is your mind? If your mind is on what the economy is doing, you will not have perfect peace. If your mind is on what people are saying, you won't have perfect peace. If your heart is in what people are, you will never have perfect peace like that. Because perfect peace only comes 
when your mind has decided, I will be on the Lord. Peter already entered a dimension that he could walk on water simply because his eyes were on Jesus. The moment he looked at the waves, he began to drown. You are drowning in the situations you are in because you are moving your eyes from Jesus. It's good. Amen. Amen. Stand up, we are going to pray. It's good. Stand up, we are going to pray. <laughs> Perfect peace is available. I'll say it one more time. Perfect peace is available. Amen. You have to remember that the attitude of devils, the behavior of demons is restlessness. When you live a life that does not have rest, you are actually manifesting demonic symptoms. And demons will be attracted to you because you are similar. The deep calleth unto what? The deep. I'm sorry, I know some people won't tell you that. No, it's true. 100 million percent true. You need a sense of calm. That is how you resist the devil. Jesus maintained his peace. A demon was coming, he was just at peace. Man shall not live by bread alone. Uh, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. He wasn't the moment the devil does something. Fire! In the name! No, you're not going to rev me up like that. Only God will tell me if I do warfare or not. Many of you, a little sign of the devil, instead of sitting there and laughing, you say, you small devil, you're not even going to take my energy. Every warfare is not fire in the name of Jesus. No, sometimes you just need to chill. The devil comes. Uh, you say, ah, it's just you. Shoo. And you go back to sleep. Hey, Satan will be like, ah, he knows I'm a toothless lion. I'm just a kitty. Meow. Amen. But if everything the devil does is like you're ready to fight, it's just like the devil is not even at the level of fighting with you. He is already under your feet. Amen. How can you fight something that is beneath you? Amen. Amen. The reason why you keep fighting is because you don't understand you're already in perfect peace. Yeah. So, witchcraft, I bind, I bind, I bind. Where is God in this picture? He who does not sleep or slumber, he should keep you. Why is it impossible for him to keep you? No, he's been keeping you, but you have no rest. So you are reacting to every arrow that flies by night. Notice it is flying by. It's not coming to you. Huh? No weapon formed against you will prosper. They can point a machine gun, a nuclear bomb. When they fire, it will shoot them. It will not shoot you. Why are you always reacting? It has no power over you. Amen. But they need to always, huh, you're ready to do something, ready to do something. Something is missing. Something is missing. It should never be like that. It should never be like that. Especially when we know our place in Christ. When we know our place in God. We sh it shouldn't be like that. Being close to God, you will be tested. But even when you're not with God, you will be tested also. This is a fallen world. There are problems left, right, center, north, east, southwest. Everywhere you go, you will have the same problem. Moving to Atlanta, moving to Florida, moving to, to, to Nashville doesn't take away your problems. The same problems will follow you. It is not about changing location. It is about changing what is inside of you. Amen. Amen. The same exact thing will follow. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. The same thing will follow. Perfect peace. Lift your hands to the Lord. And you're going to tell the Lord Jesus. Father, today I pray that you will recalibrate me. That I will have my eyes on you. 
help me to keep my eyes on you for too long i have looked i've kept my mind on men and men have disappointed me i've kept my mind on situations and situations didn't work out i have moved ev i've tried everything but it has failed but i realized that when i was succeeding when i had any sense of of progress was when my mind was set on you father be merciful with me today help me to remove distractions from my life that my mind will stay on you lift your voice and pray in your own words